we're now going to take a look how we can actively use BIMTRACK. So how do we manage issues? How do we add issues? How do we get collaboration between the likes of Revit, Navisworks, so on and so forth, and start bringing this whole thing together? And actually the answer is very, very straightforward. So I'm back in my demo project, and inside of this demo, I have the ability to go and see that actually on the issues list, there's nothing there. So I have a completely blank, fresh project. And actually, I'm going to start this project within the viewer. I want to show you that using this viewer that we went through earlier today, I can load up an IFC file and I can start adding issues and collaborating with this model directly from a browser. Again, you'll remember from earlier that this browser will work with pretty much any web browser. Chrome, Firefox, Opera, Edge, or even the mobile devices such as Safari on iOS or Chrome on the Android devices. This means that this process is identical on pretty much any web enabled device, which is great. Now in this example, I'm gonna come in here and just add a couple of issues live on the web. So I'm gonna say from here, maybe I wanna have a, a slightly different look and feel to the front of this. So I wanna check that this, uh, this corridor width is, uh, is accessible with a, a wheelchair, whatever it might be. So I can come on here and add a measurement there, which I'm happy with. And against that measurement, I'm just gonna come in and say, let's go ahead and create an issue. So on the left-hand side, I go over to issues and I choose to create an issue. That issue has two options. I can create a dumb issue or I can create a localized issue. A localized issue will allow me to give a very specific coordinate, so it's a localized problem. Whereas creating an issue will just create an issue in this particular location. So let's say localized issue. I can then go ahead and choose where I would like to localize the issue. And you can see that this has given me the ability to hover over and select different elements in the model. I'm going to select this door just here. This will create a snapshot of the model at that point in time. Give me some simple red line markup, which is basically just pen tools. So I have the ability to, um, to get a pencil and draw freehand if I want to. I have the ability to write some text if I want to. I have the ability to choose the font size, put in a rectangle, some red line markup, so on and so forth. With that basic markup, I can then add a title. Please check um, the door accessibility and type. Description. Um, this door must be um, accessible by wheelchair. Needs to be um, level and flat um, at lower points and minimum um, widths. Now here's all my attributes. You remember these attributes from earlier on when we started looking at the settings. I have a status, this issue is open. And remember we set type and priority as mandatory. So the type of issue, I'm just gonna put a comment. The priority is medium. The rest of these issues, if I want to, I can come in and leave blank because they're not mandatory. But what I am going to do is show you that I can assign this to an individual user, or I can say that I want to come in and start working with um, an issue group, confidentiality. Um, I can say it's only spe for specific teams, so on and so forth. In this case, I'm just gonna say this is an architectural issue and I'm gonna assign it specifically by name to Richard. From there, I can give it a due date, set some other lists if I want to, including some of my default values. So remember, I created these uh, these custom um, groups earlier on. Helps if I spell correctly. And I've got my custom drop down here. We choose the settings we want, and then we press save. Once we've done that, we're just going to move around slightly. We're going to go and find another location in this uh, um, model and see what's going on. So let's just come into the kitchen here. And let's just say that I'm looking at this from a client's perspective and I don't like this column. I want to see if there's any other way of working with the structural design. So again, I'm going to localize the issue. I'm going to select the column. And from there, I'm going to come and add some information. So 
So let's just say that the client isn't happy with the column positioning. Um, are there any alternative options? Again, we can set a type, we can set a priority, and we can give that a discipline. Save that issue away. Once these issues get built up, first and foremost, you'll notice they're being colored. Those issues are being colored based on their priority, if you remember earlier. I can see a camera location and an issue location. If I click on the camera, it will take me to the camera. If you click on the issue, it will take me to the issue. I can also be completely elsewhere in the model. I can be back in my list and I can say, show me this issue. View and edit this issue. This means that I can come in and start working with this actively. So I can add comments to issues, I can attach information to issues directly from the web client if we want to. We're not going to do that today. We're just going to show you that we've added issues directly on the web. And from there, I'm going to basically jump straight into Revit. And from Revit, I'm going to fire into my 3D view. I'm going to open BIM track inside of Revit. And I'm going to sign in with my security credentials. From here, I select my hub. I select my project. And then I have my list of issues. If I select this and say view in model, this will change my camera inside of Revit and look directly at that issue. From there, we could start working on this particular camera. And we might say we want to make this slightly more Revit friendly, perhaps. So we might come in and, uh, and put a, a section box oops, around this particular um, component. So let's select a couple of these, maybe these walls here. And put a section box around it. Let's select the floor as well. And we'll say, and the door, make sure I don't miss the door. Put a section box around it. And with that section box, we can basically choose to come in Click the three dots on the uh, on the issue. I can say viewpoint, and I can update it from my current view. That will update the issue inside of BIM Track to show as I'm looking at it now inside of Revit. I can also add from the current view. That will add a second image onto that issue of my current view, so I can get a more collaborative or a more 3D based view should I need to. Once we have that, we can come in and we can say, OK, well, I also want to um, come in there and view it or edit it on the web. That would take me directly into my web browser and open that issue on the web. We don't need to do that, though, because we can edit it directly inside of Revit. If we just click View Edit, it will take us to a dialog box where we have our screenshots our title and description, and all of our metadata. From here, I can add comments, checked, and all OK. I can post that as a comment. I can attach a file. I can attach an image. I can screenshot a specific section of Revit, should I want to. And everything that I'm doing is being logged. So I have a history where all my details are shown of every change that's happening in the background. So from there, I'm going to change from the status from open to in progress, publish. If we just jump straight back onto the web browser now, we will see that both inside of my issues here, in the viewer and in the default list, I now have my comments, my additional images, and my history, and any attachments that I've put on there, PDF files, whatever they might be, will start to be updated. 
So it's very, very easy to start collaborating. Doesn't matter what CAD system you're using, everything starts working. Even if I come in and start doing something completely from scratch. For instance, I'm going to open up Navisworks. I'm working on Navisworks Manage, but you could do the same thing with Nav Navisworks Simulate. And if I go into Navisworks Manage, I haven't used Navisworks on this project before. So how, how do I know that this is going to start working on Navisworks and starting to do what it is I want it to do inside of Navisworks? Because this is a sample project, I'm just going to do a quick save as just to grab myself a native Revit file um, that I can work with on the desktop. So let's just throw this RVT down on the desktop here. And then from Navis, I'm going to choose to append and I'm going to grab that file from the desktop. That'll take a couple of seconds just to load up that Revit file. You will already notice that at the top of the screen I have a BIMTRAC tab on my ribbon. I'm going to be able to log into BIMTRAC and even though this is the first load of this file in Navisworks, it will instantly start working and doing what it needs to do. The same goes in Solibri. So whilst this is loading inside of Navisworks, I can fire over into Solibri Office. I can choose to open a model in Solibri Office. And that model is going to be the IFC file that I created. From that IFC file, once it, I'm going to go straight across to my communication tab and I'm going to say to add a presentation from my BCF server and press OK. There's my server. My project is temporary project. I can press OK. I'm going to say we want to download new issues. Sync. We could run a filter if you want to. I'm just going to say bring everything in. And what this will do is it will download and open all of my issues into BIMTRAC. Or into Salibri, sorry, from BIMTRAC. So here is this issue in its original form. And with all the additional images that we had from Revit. With all the comments that we made. And this one here. Again, we have the ability to push issue information directly up from here and synchronize it back to BIMTRAC. If we jump back into Navisworks, go to our BIMTRAC, log in, once we're logged in, choose our hub, choose our project. Here's the issues. We can instantly see that we have the views around our model. We can click on them or go to here and click on them. And these will take us directly to our different issues and allow us to edit them the same way that you've just seen from Revit and from Salibri. A very, very simple workflow. It works really well. We have the ability to create issues anywhere. We can create an issue on the web. We can create an issue from Salibri, from Revit, from Navisworks. We have different ways that we create issues, but they all work in the same way. Finally, just to explain this in a bit more detail, let's just do a simple class report inside of Navisworks and send some of those clashes up to BIMTRAC. The process would be near identical, although following the Salibri methodology to take a rule validation from Salibri and push those up to BIMTRAC. In here, using Salibri, uh, sorry, Navisworks functionality, I can go to Home, I can open my Class Detective in Navisworks Manage, and I can simply say Add a Test, Class 1, and I'm just going to say go ahead and class everything with everything. Not particularly realistic, but Go and do a hard clash of everything against everything. This will go away and naturally it will find lots of clashes because I've been very down and dirty with that. But if I just go and have a look at what I've got, I've got um, a load of clashes. Most of them 
um, are going to be irrelevant, although some are pretty relevant. So if I just go and take a couple of them and just say that with Clash 5, I'm going to say that's an active Clash. Um, with Clash 12, I'm also going to say that's an active Clash. And maybe Clash 75, I'm also going to say that's an active Clash. I'm going to close the Clash Detective, go into my BIM track, and I'm going to say that I would like to create... Uh, sorry, it's already open. I'm going to create issues from clashes. You'll notice we can also do Navisworks views to issues as well as manual issues. But go from clashes to issues. It just gives me a warning saying don't do too many. Um, be careful about what you send up because it will send everything if you want it to. I'm going to say take clash 1. Take only clashes that are active. And I want to upload them into BIMTRACK. I want to assign them to me. I'm going to put them on critical priority. And I'm just going to say go. What BIMTRACK and Navisworks will do is it will create all of those clashes as issues. And it will upload them into BIMTRACK. We will instantly see our issue list here on the right hand side being updated. We will instantly see in Revit. Just turn off my section box here. Um, those issues have been updated. And we'll also see on the web, if we go back to our issues, this issue list has also been updated. The same in the viewer and across any of the other integrations that we have inside of the system. So what we have with BIMTRACK is the ability to manage issues extremely quickly. We can create issues wherever they exist, whether it's in Navisworks, whether it's in Celebri, or whether it's in um, Revit. We have the ability to even go as far as creating issues directly inside of the 3D model. Everything that we can do here is based on having better coordination and better collaboration throughout the project phase.